Speaker, thank you, and thanks to the uh, co-leader of the Greens, Dr Russell Norman, uh, for his contribution. And also, let me congratulate uh, Mr Darren Hughes, um, who's given us an opportunity to have this uh, debate in the House. Um, he had the wit to put the, uh, to put the application in and actually get it across the line. And I say to that member, another nine years in opposition and he'll start to be a good opposition MP. And uh, also, uh, Mr Hughes, we welcome the opportunity to have this discussion uh, about the government. And uh, Mr Speaker, I would also contrast the incredible stability of the National Party, the Māori Party, the United Party and the ACT Party, and I'd like to contrast that just for the members opposite of the Labour Party with the Alliance Party. What happened? It fell to bits. Uh, the uh, Labour Party and the United Future Party, what happened? Fell to bits. And then the Labour Party and the New Zealand First Party, what happened? Fell to bits. And here we have the Labour Party, the, the National Party, the ACT Party, the Māori Party. Yes, we have our differences, but we're working together extremely well. And I put that down to Prime Minister John Key, who has done a fantastic job as the Prime Minister for the country and for this parliament. And I say to the members opposite, the ACT Party got elected and we said before the election that we would support John Key as Prime Minister and the National Party. We said it again on election night and we have kept to our word. And what the people of New Zealand know is that they have a stable centre-right government and getting on with the business. As a consequence of the ACT Party, we have the 2025 goal of catching Australia, which is now exercising the Labour Party, and so it should, because it's important that we lift our economic performance. We have the task force to measure our performance. We are working with Minister of Finance Bill English to get spending under control, left in the disastrous state. We have the red tape under control. We have local government being reformed. We have our three strikes legislation and we have our inter-party working group on school choice. Now let me address this. Let me explain this, Mr Twyford. Yes, it's a case that under our caucus rules, under our caucus rules, we can change the leader and the deputy leader and we have a process that we follow. As soon as, and I want to explain this, because this just explains the difference between this side of the House and that side of the House, our Prime Minister and the previous Prime Minister. John Viscowan put on notice in the Act Caucus that he would contest to be the Deputy Leader of the Act Party. Because John Viscowan viewed that he would make a better contribution to the ACT Party as the Deputy Leader in his role. And he is perfectly entitled to do that. As soon as John Viscowan lodged that application, I told the Prime Minister. So I told the Prime Minister 13 days ago, 12 days before the vote, 12 days before the vote, that John Viscowan had put his name forward put his name forward to be the deputy leader of the ACT Party. That's the level of trust that we have as parties. We discussed it in detail. Then what happened, Mr Speaker, is I discussed with the Prime Minister, John Key, well, what would happen... Well, if you be quiet for a minute, Darren, I'll tell you. I discussed with the Prime Minister what would happen in terms of our confidence and supply agreement if there's change to the deputy leader of the ACT Party. He, well, no, we explained that it would be up to the caucus, Mr Hughes. So we then discussed, and the Prime Minister explained, that actually the position of ministerial goes with being the deputy leader of the ACT Party. The deputy leader of the ACT Party. We had that discussion... We had a discussion, Mr. Mr. Hughes. The Prime Minister and I worked out our situation. We worked out the timing. We turned up. John Viscowan made his case to the caucus. 
John Fiskelman made his case to the caucus. Heather Roy made her case to the caucus. And the ACT caucus had a vote. And I informed the Prime Minister of the result. And then, Mr Speaker, well, I tell you it's a funny thing about what the Labour Party doesn't get. I'll tell you why. It's called democracy, Mr Hughes. We don't live in a party that was known by the name of Helen Grant. And the Prime Minister understands democracy, that a caucus can have a vote. And I know that's a hard concept for Labour to grasp, that the caucus here can have a vote and change their leader and change their deputy leader. I was then able to inform the Prime Minister of that and we made the requisite changes, Mr Speaker. Mr Hughes has made a great play about transparency and accountability. A mate play, or let it play the transparency and accountability. We were absolutely transparent with the Prime Minister about what was going on. This was internal party business, and it may have been that John Boscowan didn't succeed. It may be that John Boscowan didn't succeed. In the event, he succeeded, and we got a democratic outcome in our caucus. And let me say this about Helen Clark. Uh, Helen, let me say this. I look over there and I don't know why I think of that other woman. Let me say this about Heather Roy. You have never heard me say a bad thing about Heather Roy. You have never heard me say uh, anything about Heather Roy. I accepted the result of the caucus and I said to Heather, I think it's a good idea to take two weeks leave, which she is doing. And we don't go like the Labour Party and say of a respected member, oh, I think he's mentally deranged, which is what they do over there. We don't have them being chased around by the cameras. We actually respect the members of our caucus. Heather is taking two weeks leave. We hope that Heather will come back, and I believe this will be the case, and continue to make a great contribution to the ACT Party as a caucus member. Why? Because it's important that ACT work well together and to support this government. And I say, I say, I say this to Darian Hughes. They will not be here at the next election. And this man is responsible for Darren Hughes. Darren Hughes. Darren Hughes. Mr Darren Hughes, let me ask you a question. Are you one of the ones that thinks that Labour can win the next election? Or are you with Mr Chris Carter who tells the truth? Why don't they call, oh, he's going to, we're going to be toast at the next election. I've heard that long before. I was hearing that, Mr Hughes, when you were still in short pants. Actually, come to think of it, you're still in short pants. Order. Order, the Speaker is not today in short pants. He might wear them around the farm, but not here in the House. I apologise, Mr Speaker. I was meaning Mr Darren Hughes in short pants. Perish, perish the image. But what I can say is the ACT Party have emerged from this stronger. Absolutely. And I can tell you this. We have a stronger relationship with the National Party, the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, Bill English, and indeed the Mary Party and the United Party, because we know that these things can occur in a democracy. But what we have a commitment to is to a government to the people of Epsom and to the people of New Zealand to provide good, stable government, something that Labour could never do. Thank you very much.